everybody. Hello, my friend. How are you today? So today we're going to be doing overcoming overwhelm. Who here feels overwhelmed in any part of their life? Just write down below. And then what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to minimize myself because you don't need to look at me so much as what it is that I am talking about. Make sure you eliminate any other distractions you deserve this time for yourself. Here's how to know if you're in the right place. If you'd like to get back into a creative habit, if you have so much to do that you feel like you're spinning, who here feels like you're spinning? Or maybe your fears and doubts are holding you back from sharing your gifts from the world. Now, if you stay tuned until the end, you're going to find out how to get today's freebie, totally free, 100% free. I have some, uh, well, we, we call them art journaling prompts. They're actually just journaling prompts, but you feel free to use them in an art journal if you want to. And it's all about overcoming overwhelm, today's topic. Here's what you're going to learn. You're going to learn how to recognize which feelings are getting in your way, how to create a goal setting process that actually works, how to generate positive emotion to take inspired action. Now, if you like, you can share this with your page. It would do me a great favor if you share this so that your friends, you'll actually be doing your friends a favor if you share this with them right now. Or maybe you want to share it with yourself just so you can go back and re-watch it later. So today we're talking about overcoming overwhelm. <laughs> the reason we're talking about overwhelm today is because I, it recently came up in one of my artist incubator coaching calls. As much as I wanted to share with my, my artists more strategies, I knew I had to hold off until we addressed their feelings of overwhelm. It wasn't going to help them to keep piling on and piling on. So real quick, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Miriam Shulman. I'm a professional artist for over 18 years, and I'm the founder of The Inspiration Place, an online art class site where I teach how to paint in watercolor and mixed media. So if you're ready to stop putting yourself on the back burner and start investing in your creativity, you're in the right place. I've done it, and I can inspire you how to do it as well. So let's talk about overcoming overwhelm. Today's lesson is adapted and inspired by Brooke Castile's programs. She, I highly recommend that you listen to her podcast, The Life Coach School, as it teaches you to manage your mind. So a lot of the thought work I'm talking about here today are things that I've learned directly from her. So one quote that she has that I want to share with you is discomfort is the currency for completing your dreams. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, that's a good sign. You have to trade temporary discomfort for long-term discomfort. What do I mean by that? So maybe it makes you feel uncomfortable to do something now, but it's more uncomfortable if you put it off and don't do it at all. So either you'll be uncomfortable now and do the thing you don't want to do, or you'll be uncomfortable later because you didn't do it. Here are some negative emotions that stand in your way of getting those things done, even though you know it's good for you. Confusion, doubt, self-pity, fear, and overwhelm. Any of those things sound familiar? All right, these are emotions that do not serve you. And, and wallowing in self-pity, confusion, doubt, fear, and overwhelm and telling yourself that you feel this way doesn't help you. This just makes you feel stuck and to not doing things. So if you need to do something, here is a way to get things done and a goal setting process that will get you past those negative emotions and actually works. So let's choose a 30 day goal. You can either write this down privately or you can share it in the comments if you're feeling really brave. So just pick one thing 
and you're not allowed to change your mind midway. So let's talk about some examples of things. Um, so your one thing could be that you're going to you're going to build a website. You're going to post ten times on Instagram. Maybe you're going to send out four emails. It has to be very specific though, and. In your journal or in the notes that you're taking right now, I invite you to write your goal in this format. So by November 1st, I will have completed and created my goal. So by November 1st, I will have sent out four emails and I will know that I'm done because those emails are actually sent. So it's not like I will, don't write goals and like I'm going to write more emails. It has to be very specific. Here's another example. By September 30th, I will have created my website. I'll know that I'm done because I will be able to post that URL on Facebook. Pick something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable. If it doesn't make you uncomfortable, it's not a goal. It's just a to-do. So here are some journal exercises that will help you if you're feeling uncomfortable in this process. So spend some time writing down and connecting with why you want to achieve this goal. Why is this important to you? Also spend some time writing down and thinking about why are you going to do this goal no matter what, when no matter what gets uncomfortable or what gets in the way. And who are you going to hold yourself accountable to? So you could hold yourself accountable by saying what your goal is right now and coming back here and telling me that you did it. You could have an accountability buddy. You could have a coach. You could post on your Facebook page, whatever it is that you want to do to hold yourself accountable. Now, the order to, in order to move forward, you have to wrestle with negative emotions that might be getting in your way. So as far as those negative emotions, here are the questions you can ask yourself. When you think about the work you need to do to reach your goal, how does that make you feel? Now, this goal can be a creative goal, but I, I believe for many of you, that's not the problem. Um, some of you, it is. You, don't, you don't, just don't even allow yourself the time to be creative because you spent your whole life put, putting other people ahead of your needs that you, you are last on the list. But for other people, creativity is not the problem. The problem might be promoting your art and putting it out there at, because that means you might get rejected. So that could be the problem that's holding you back. But you could also choose a personal goal or you can cho choose a business goal. You do what you need to do personally. Then you're, now I know that I'm going really fast. That's why I do have a handout at the end of this that will help you. So or if you want, you can even come back to this video and watch it again as many times as you need to. So what you're going to do next is you're going to brainstorm what thoughts you are having that is making you feel this way. So if you are fearful of doing it, is it because you're thinking you're going to get rejected? That might be a thought. You're thinking maybe people won't like my art. Maybe you're hesitating to write an email because your thought is, I'm not a good writer, which maybe when you say you think that's the truth, but notice that that's really a thought and that might be a limiting belief that you have. So the next part is very important. You're gotta, you have to start brainstorming what are the positive emotions that will help you move towards the goal. So we first identify what the emotions we, we're actually thinking thinking and feeling that is keeping us from doing those things. Maybe it's fear, maybe it's overwhelm, maybe it's self-doubt, any of those things. But now push those aside for a moment and let's talk about what positive emotions will actually help you move forward. Because feelings are something you actually have control over. You have a choice. You can think of feelings like clothes in your closet or a choice on the menu. How do you want to feel? You get to choose to think and feel whatever you want. You are the only one who thinks in your own mind. Feelings are just a vibration in your body, and you can control your feelings with your thoughts. Here are some positive emotions that I suggest, and I would love for you 
to be active in the comments and maybe you can think of some positive emotions yourself. Just start adding to it right now into the comments. You can say how you think a positive emotion that might move you forward. I'm going to start sharing the ones that I suggest. And this is not a complete list. So committed. Maybe you feel committed, excited, empowered, disciplined, willing, dedicated, inspired, motivated, confident, brave, And I bet you guys have other ideas of emotions. This is not a complete list, but whatever emotion that you need to feel to move forward, I feel confident. All right, so we just said, can you think of others? And if you can think of more, put them down below because there are lots of emotions and you guys have already thought of some new ones that I didn't put on that list. Choosing positive emotions leads to inspired action. That's actually how law of attraction works. We can choose these emotions and then we choose to act in an inspired way and then we're going to get the result that we want. I hope that you find these techniques for overcoming overwhelm useful. If you want to head start, try these action steps. Okay, step one, write down everything that you can think of, no matter how big or small, that you have to do in order to reach that 30-day goal that we talked about a few moments before. So if your 30-day goal is to create five paintings, one step you might need to take is you need to buy the canvases. You need the paint. You need to decide what you're going to paint. Maybe you need to create watercolor sketches of your ideas in your sketchbook, if that's your creative goal. Maybe your goal is a business goal. Maybe it's to create a website. You're going to have to choose a website. Maybe you need some help on that. So write down every single thing you can think of, no matter how big or small, that you have to do to reach that goal. And now I want you to ask yourself, what are all the obstacles that you can think of that might stand in your way? The idea is that you are going to turn each of these obstacles into an action. So maybe your obstacle is, I don't know how to do it. Well, then step three might be, what do you need help with? So you you write down the list of everything that needs to get done. Maybe you need help with something. Maybe you need to Google how to do it. There's actually a lot of answers already out there that you don't need to ask somebody else to do. The internet is pretty big right now. And what I want you to do next is each of those obstacles, each of those action steps, each of those things you need help with, each of those obstacles becomes an action step that you add to that list of things to do. Then what you need to do, and this is really important, for each of those things that you wrote down that you have to do, you have to write down how much time you think it might take and schedule blocks of time in your calendar to complete them. So for example, let's say you want to make five paintings, well, you have to go to the store, you better schedule in time to go to the store in your calendar. Or maybe you schedule in time to order it online. I don't know. It's up to you. No judgment. But do you see what I mean? Each thing takes time and each thing needs to be scheduled. And then honor your commitments to yourself. So if you schedule time from four to six in your calendar to write those emails, don't make excuses. You wrote down four o'clock, you better show up at four o'clock in front of your computer. Even if you stare at it for an hour, you honor that commitment to yourself. If you wrote down at four o'clock, you're going to paint, you show up with the apron in your studio space or wherever it is that you paint and you show up ready to paint. Honor your commitments to yourself. Learn to trust yourself by honoring those commitments. Now, you do have to create a backup plan. What is your backup plan? Now, backup plans should only be used if blood, hospitals, or sick children or family members are involved. Otherwise, you do not go to the backup plan. So backup plan could be any unfinished work can be done four to five on Sunday. So that is your backup plan. Make sure you schedule your downtime, your exercise, and your self-care as well. Honor yourself. Honor the way you need to treat yourself. So make sure that you 
schedule your downtime, your exercise, and your self-care. After our time together comes to a, a close today, if you find those negative emotions, those negative thoughts creeping back in, I have one more technique to share with you. So I want to give you a free a freebie, which basically has these daily journal prompts that you can use to take back control of your own emotions. You can use these in your journal, you can use these in an art journal, or you can even just grab a piece of paper just to get yourself back on track. To get your hands on the free daily journal exercise for overcoming overwhelm, just go to shulmanart.com forward slash prompts. Okay, and I love all these emotions here. So Janet is, feels inspired and blessed. This is beautiful. This is great. All right, so we're pretty much at the end of our time together. So I have time for a few questions. If you don't have any questions, um, or even if you do, and you enjoy today's uh, session on overcoming overwhelm, give me a thumbs up or just let me know in the comments below what you thought of today's call and if this is the type of content you want to have here because I, I always want looking to give you what you want. And by the way, I have a very similar version of this that's coming out on the podcast. So you can listen to me on, on the go while you're painting. If this was helpful, maybe you might want to listen to the whole thing all over again. Okay, so Deb Meyer says good advice. Okay, Linda's happy to be here. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. So we are going to wrap up. Thank you so much for joining me here today, whether you are um, live or watching the replay. Um, oh, we have do have one question. So let, I'll just share this one question. So Mary wants to know, how do I know the right price to charge for a painting? You know, I'm always getting asked that question and pricing is so emotional. So the right price is the price you can confidently ask. And people say yes at least half of the time. Not every time. If they say it yes every time, that means your prices are too low. But about half the time, you'll hear a yes at that price. That's a good sweet spot for pricing your art. It has nothing to do with how long you took to, to make the painting. And it only has something to do with the size in terms of yourself, that your small paintings are going to cost less than your large paintings. But my small painting might cost more than your large painting. So it's individual that way. Okay, so that's a great question. All right, so we are now going to wrap up. Thank you for that question. And this, thank everybody once again. Thank you if you joined me here today live. And thank you if you joined me on the replay. And I'll see you all soon. Okay, bye for now.